Welcome everybody from Steve Finland acting on behalf of the First Church on January 22nd, 2023. Welcome to you who take the time to listen to these reduced versions of our Sunday services wherein I give a sermon, a song, and a prayer. Today the song is The Lord of the Dance, number 163 in our hymnal, uh, a shaker tune and a, a familiar one. And so our sermon today is called Follow Me. It begins with Isaiah 9, 1 to 4. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plum plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. And then Matthew four twelve through 23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. May God give his blessing to my interpretation today. Well, welcome to the First Church broadcast. Thinking of you gives me joy, just as fellowshipping with my congregation gives me joy and feeds my soul. We learn so much from each other, and it's important to be open to new people. You know how often you make friends through your existing friends. I think that is what happened with the early apostles. Matthew makes it sound like Andrew, Peter, John, and James immediately began following Jesus the instant they met him. A more likely story is the version in John's Gospel, where Andrew and Peter were originally followers of John the Baptist. They knew Jesus from around the time he was baptized, if not earlier. Thus, they met through their religious connections, their connection with John the Baptist. So when Jesus went and called Peter and Andrew, they already knew who he was and that he had been baptized by John. This causes us not to treat the story as an almost magical encounter where the fishermen drop what they're doing and follow a complete stranger. Still, there is a demandingness in Jesus' call. The apostles had to be willing to leave behind fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and travel with Jesus throughout Galilee, Samaria, Perea, Decapolis, and Judea, preaching to Jews and Gentiles alike. The great metaphor, I will make you fish for people, describes the sudden change in their lives. That sudden change can occur for everyday disciples as well as for full-time apostles. The Isaiah passage vividly describes this suddenness when it says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. It may be that the Isaiah passage is talking about both Gentiles and Jews, since it calls 
the land Galilee of the Gentiles. It's a region where there are Gentiles bordering Jews. Uh, and so that whole region may be what's promised, the light. Many Greeks of the first century felt that suddenness when they accepted the Christian message, felt that a great light had shone upon them and they were now among the children of light. It was a sudden and permanent change for each person individually and for their shared identity. They could now understand themselves as being included among the children of God and part of the story of Israel. Did that ever happen to you when a great light shone upon you suddenly? Or did you come to the light through a slow accumulation of realizations? Was it like the sun bursting through the clouds, or was it like sitting by a lakeshore and increasingly enjoying the peace and the sound of birds? Did you have a sudden realization of the Lordship of Jesus, or did you grow into it over the years? It can happen either way. I've had both experiences. With the intense conversion experience when I was 20 came a change in my life from sadness and uncertainty to joy and faith. I quit smoking. I quit suddenly. But I've also had the experience of slow growth. I'm guessing that Peter and Andrew remembered their calling as a sudden decision to follow Jesus, although in fact they already knew him and probably knew something about his teachings. But when it came time to form the apostolic core, it happened very quickly. They had to leave their families promptly. And though they knew Jesus, the changes in their lives, their new lifestyle of traveling from city to city, the change of daily work and having to interact with many new people must have been quite an adjustment. It was an intense demand. Join up with an independent prophet who has no institutional support. Travel through Jewish and Gentile regions preaching and ministering and have no certainty about where it will all lead. It was an act of faith to join with him. We know of one apostle who lived to a ripe old age and had a congregation who loved him. That's John, son of Zebedee. But he was the exception. About half of the apostles suffered martyrdom. Even John had to endure a period of forced exile to the Isle of Patmos. Yet this fellowship had experiences like nobody else, and they set in motion a process that really changed the world. Many years later, when the Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity, the ancient pagan empire started to change into a Christian one. The church took over the Roman Empire, and then the church outlived the empire when the empire collapsed. So as you grow in your religious living, be ready for either experience, either the sudden enlightenment and life change, or for gradual growth. As Ephesians says, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. There is a freshness and delight in that renewing, whether it comes with an intense experience or is the fruit of gradual growth. Both are part of the life of spiritual growth. Drink in the truth. Be open to change and be renewed. Thanks be to God. And so we have a tune, The Lord of the Dance, number 163. I think I will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, 
they came with me and the dance went on dance then wherever you may be i am the lord of the dance said he and i'll lead you all wherever you may be and i'll lead you all in the dance said he they cut me down and i leaped up high i am the life that'll never never die i'll live in you if you'll live in me i am the lord of the dance said he dance then wherever you may be i am the lord of the dance said he and i'll lead you all wherever you may be and i'll lead you all in the dance said he the dance is the dance of life he will lead us in living and in knowing how to live knowing how to love knowing how to forgive he forgave peter and retained peter as his greatest apostle among the twelve at least the greatest preacher probably uh, and so we learn how to live from jesus thanks be to god let us pray Jesus, help us all to learn how to live through you. Let us practice your love and s weave our wi lives out of your love and out of the fellowship that results. Help us to forgive and help people in our midst who are sick. We pray for Winnie. We pray for Greta. We pray for Carol and Mike. Help people to recover their strength and health. Bless people and let them know that they are loved by you and by us. And we say the prayer that you taught when you said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the supreme prayer and the prayer that we might be part of that activity of having your will be done on earth and in our relationships. Help us to value every relationship we have. Help us to pray about every person we know. And so, in that spirit, go forth and live l like a child of light. Be part of the community of the enlightened, doing God's will and thanking Jesus for his revelation, his ongoing re revelation of Jesus' and God's nature. Thanks be to God. Go with God.